Located in the centre of Pembroke, between Centre, Olden and Kerr Streets, and 26 miles south of Boston, sits the historic First Church. Dating back to 1712, it symbolizes the primary cause of Pembroke's existence, the reason it became a town, since the law of England's royalty decreed that every town, in order to be incorporated, must be built around a parish church. The original church body, or group of people looking to worship, dates back to 1708. On June 8th, on the north side of Mountain Avenue, between Center Street and the Herringbrook, in a place called Savaday Orchard, a shed was raised. This was the location of an early apple orchard, where local residents met for Sunday or Sabbath day worship, under the ministry of Thomas Paris. Thomas was the brother of Samuel Paris of the Salem Witch Trials. Really, the origin of First Church is in Duxbury, of course, and they met near Hall's Corner in Duxbury. Right now, there's no ruins or foundations or any part of the original building that um, people went to from uh, miles around from Duxbury and from what's now called Pembroke and what's now called Hanson, because it was all Duxbury at one time, but it was great distance to travel. And it's actually the Mayflower Cemetery where um, the church once stood, just, be, just as you're coming into Hall's Corner. So you could imagine the trip on a freezing cold day and a snowy day. You can imagine people either walking or taking horses or riding in a wagon and how difficult that would have been. So people had to go a great distance. So sometime after 1702, 03, people began to get a little bit restless in terms of making that trip and growing in numbers enough as to want to start their own uh, community, whether it could be the hands and feet of Christ. And so they met in the home of a Mr. Rogers, um, who, if we look at it now, would have lived somewhere off of Mountain Avenue. And it was in his orchard, um, and we're not sure exactly where that orchard is, that groups of people would meet as opposed to taking the trip all the way into Duxbury. In 1712, the shed was moved to Higgory, or Highgary, better known as Pembroke Center Common. This is the site of the present-day church. Daniel Lewis was the first Calvinist uh, pastor of the church and preached fire and brimstone type sermons and far cry from who we are today. By 1726, the parishioners had outgrown the shed and a new meeting house was built. The contract was given to Isaac Thomas for 600 pounds. The new church was ready the next year and the old building was sold. This new building resembled a modern day church. The new meeting house was the location of the historic Pembroke Resolves. The town's reputation as colonial rebels was evident from the beginning. The Resolves were a reaction to the British acts perceived to be oppressive. They were considered the first act in the colonies to publicly express the desire to separate from England. Pembroke Resolves were approved by unanimous vote on town meeting of December 28, 1772. So four years before the official Declaration of Independence was even written, a group of Pembroke residents drafted what was the first actual request to secede from English rule. Um, John Adams journeyed down here to Pembroke from Boston and other uh, leaders from the Boston community they met up with a pastor here who was a very zealous patriot for uh, the cause of um, the colonies and, and spoke about it frequently from this pulpit that 
um, we should resist and, and there should be independence. So he invited John Adams and, and others to convene here and to issue this proclamation or resolve before the Declaration of Independence. And so they met with various townsfolks in the, in the sanctuary of the church by candlelight and they set to work to draft a document and of course doing this by candlelight meant that they needed more candles than they had um, because this process took a lot longer than they envisioned. So it, somewhere after midnight the proceedings stopped while people got on horses, rode throughout the uh, town to find more candles from, from uh, other people who lived in the village. And so they rounded up the, the uh, candles after a while and brought them back and relit them. And, and the uh, debate and the uh, drafting of the document continued on. A plaque commemorating this protest was placed in the third church, which was constructed on the second site. In 1836, the second church was condemned and sold. In 1837, the townspeople built the third church, and they called that one First Church. This new church was designed by Alexander Paris, who was raised in Pembroke. He also designed, 12 years earlier, the two-story market hall directly in front of Faneuil Hall, known as Quincy Market, and St. Paul's Cathedral on Tremont Street in Boston. Watching over the town for years atop of the first church sits the old town clock. The clock was given to the town in 1837 by Reverend Morrill Allen, who was the first church minister from 1801 to 1841. It was given on the condition that it be kept in good repair. Over the years, the church evolved. After 1712, the church became um, a Unitarian church and it had a, a freer theology. And that's really when the church opened up. It opened up in a variety of ways, and, and including um, its theology that um, made the church more appealing, I think, to a, a broader uh, section of people. I think people in the, by the 19th century had had enough of the strict um, more or less puritanical preaching. And so for most of its life, it was Unitarian. And then um, late in the 19th century, it joined the congregation. It actually became a community church of Unitarians and Congregationalists, their theology being very similar. And this church has really, the United Church of Christ, Congregationalists, of which we are, has a glorious history. We're the first denomination to ordain a black person, a woman, and a person um, who was gay. And so we, we stand in that proud tradition of um, being prog a progressive church, so progressive in fact, and I'm proud of this myself, that I'm sure some of the early Puritans are actually who are buried out there from this church are rolling over in their graves as they see where, where we've come. But we've, we, we want to follow um, Jesus's command that we be as inclusive as God is inclusive and welcoming as God is welcoming to all without exception. So it's a different, it's a different era than when this church started. First Church still stands out today as a town landmark, a testament to its history and the history of the town that it made.